from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and the Cube's ecosystem partnership. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's exclusive coverage of Cisco Live. 2018 in Orlando, Florida. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, David Arnett, who's a technical marketing engineer with NetApp. He's living in the heart of the show, which of course is the knock. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. It's good to be here. All right, so Dave, uh, first, before we get into it, give us a little bit about your background. Uh, where, where are you based and what, uh, what your role is? Well, I'm based in uh, Research Triangle Park, which is uh, NetApp's East Coast headquarters, yeah. basically right across the street from Cisco's East Coast headquarters. So we, we all know the RTP, those of us that work in tech. Right, uh, so my role, I'm a technical marketing engineer on the uh, FlexPod Solutions team, so I uh, build systems in the lab and then validate them and then document them and publish them for our customers to, uh, to use to build similar systems for themselves. Okay, we go with all the TLAs, you're the TME from RTP, working <laughs> in the NOC. That's uh, correct. All right, so um, you are not responsible for the network here, so That's we're, we're not going to ask you why the network went down <laughs> for a few minutes uh, and people are troubleshooting everything right like that. Thanks, well, I appreciate what, what, that. Why don't you explain uh, you know, NetApp and your role uh, at the NOC? Well, NetApp is a big sponsor of this conference and, and one of the ways we do that is that we supply storage systems for the, for the network operations data center. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of systems that have to run to kind of, in addition to the actual network in order to make everything run. And uh, those systems require you know, data center resources. So we bring, uh, we bring servers and, and storage to, uh, to run all of, the, all of the services necessary. Okay, and, and luckily I'm sure everything went really smoothly. There's never any challenges, and that, that's why it's just this great glass thing that uh, you know, we, 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 we look at as we walk it by, It just right? magically appears like that, right? All right, so <laughs> give, give us a little bit of insight. You've, you've done this at a few shows. You know, what, what kind of things do you run in? What are the stresses and strains, and you know, how, how, how does the architecture hold up? Well, well, you know, we we started uh, Wednesday of last week putting the putting the knock together, and of course the uh, the room here was completely empty. There's nothing here. The rigging is laying all over the floor, and you know we we end up with delays just because things are in the way. We can't put our physical equipment where it needs to be. Then the power gets pulled in. We we had the racks in place, and then waited an hour or two for power to come in, and then another couple of hours for the network drop to arrive before we could get connected to the outside world. So uh, it's always kind of a challenging. There's a, there's a lot of moving parts in order to uh, to get this thing off the ground. Yeah, um, it, it reminds me so much if you talk about customer environments. All right, how does day zero go? Well, things like we, we, we interviewed uh, one of your colleagues talking about FlexPod. Right. FlexPod, converge and hyper-converge infrastructures help simplify that, that initial rollout. And then it, it should also help you know, what, what, once you're up and running. So when, once you've got the knock up and running, you know, what, what, what's your team working on? Are there knobs you've got to adjust? Are there outside stresses well, that need I, to concern you? I'm happy to say that the, the storage and the data center infrastructure is one of the most reliable parts of the, of the knock, right? Um, we, uh, once we get it up and running, it's more about monitoring and management than anything else. Um, I'm personally monitoring to make sure that we're not running out of storage capacity, to make sure that everything is still online uh, and make sure that basically everything is running as smoothly as it can be. Okay, are you doing any analytics on this? Do you have like hero numbers that come out after the show? Uh, we do, uh, we, we participate in the session on Thursday, the NOC uh, round table session, and so we're collecting all of, the, uh, all of the numbers, how much capacity we're actually using, kind of what the performance uh, envelope of the system is, and so on. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. When, when we talk about customers and the deployment, one of the biggest challenges is, okay, I'm going to deploy this, how long am I going to have it, and when am I going to run out of storage? When am I going to need to grow? It's kind of a unique beast uh, when we're here at a show like this, because you've got some ideas, but what if something's really popular, or right. you know, stresses and strains? How, how do you plan for that? And uh, you know, does anything ever, you know, come up? That well, you have to worry we've about? never actually hit the wall yet. Um, we try to be very careful. We've actually provisioned cons a considerable amount more capacity than we need, um, and the system that we've deployed is an all-flash FAS, so it's got performance to spare. Um, so we really try and avoid any of those problems up front. Um, we have seen in the past uh, issues where uh, the, the cameras and recording and such uh, generated more data than we expected, um, but it was not more than we could handle. We had, we had planned ahead and made sure we had plenty of extra capacity. Oh, oh, trust me, this is our ninth year doing the Cube, and some of the early days we were scrambling. Right. Um, luckily, we actually worked with a lot of storage <laughs> companies, so, uh, so sometimes there's spare drives or things that we, we, we can grab because 
Uh, yeah, it, it's more and more data. Uh, you know, the devices get larger, larger mega, megapixels, higher resolution. It's right. uh, challenging to deal with things like video. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is pretty challenging. And of course, every time we do this, there are more and more cameras. Not not just the data they produce, but the actual items that are producing it. So uh, things really can can grow very quickly. Yeah, are there any interest? Are they playing with like IoT here that uh, bring, brings data back? Or? Uh, not so much. I mean, the the video uh, recording is more um, just for general monitoring and security purposes, um, there is uh, there's not a whole lot of kind of deeper level analysis going on like on the on the video or anything like that. Um, as far as the rest of the systems, you know, everything is constantly being monitored, and uh, and for pretty much every system that we run at the end of the week, we'll kind of produce some metrics around uh, around what we saw and and where the where the challenges were. Okay, you said at the at the end of the show there there's a there's a round table to talk about it. What what are the users looking for? What kind of th things do they learn uh, going to a session? Uh, like well, they're really interested in how it's possible to bring such a huge scale uh, network into existence, especially in such a short period of time, right? So uh, we we talk a lot about the deployment and how, how the wireless access points get spread all over and uh, and how all the applications come up and come online and then take advantage of the, of the networks that we put in place. Um, they're really interested in the deployment details, right? Because uh, they're doing the same things in their own in their own shops, and they and they're looking for guidance on uh, how the experts do it. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, I remember I read a book once. They're like, you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a conference, but <laughs> there are some interesting <laughs> lessons that we learn. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. going through some of these deployments. A a any uh, any interesting points over your time working with the NOC? Well, you know, we 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 build the system to be really highly reliable. That's that's key for the operation of the show, right? We just can't take any chances that it goes down. Um, we've had some incidents where, you know, the wrong circuit breaker gets switched, and uh, and so we're left with a, a failed over situation, but because the system was designed to, to withstand those kind of failures, it's really nothing but a thing. We flip the power back on and make sure the other half comes back alive and we're back in action. All right, yeah, that, that definitely I'm sure uh, people's uh, running around a little bit trying to you know, fix it. Oh yeah, as soon thing. as lights go dark, man, it's, uh, there's uh, chickens in the hen house, you know? It's, all right, and uh, it's something we people can walk by. And is are there tours of it? Is it uh, you know big plexiglass thing? What, what yeah, there's like? a, the knock is actually all of our data center equipment is out on the floor for everybody to see. Uh, Rotala supplied an enclosure and the cooling equipment, so we can run it right there in the middle of the floor and still keep it at at proper data center temperatures. Uh, it's there all the time for everybody to come look at. But then there are tours daily, uh, starting at noon, I think every hour on the on the hour. Uh, there's a tour related to more specific. Uh, technologies like the wireless and the routing and switching, and then of course the data center. Okay, and, and the stuff you're not using, you're doing Bitcoin mining on that now. That's or? correct. <laughs> no, actually, uh, we do run some. Uh, we do run some. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the uh, the application now. It's one of the, it's like a not SETI but uh, something similar, folding at home or something like that to uh, to really just kind of drive the systems a little harder and uh, and run them at a, at an operational pace more like what a customer would see. Uh, we actually, in terms of the entire infrastructure, we are way over provisioned in terms of compute capacity and stuff. Uh, so we have some room to do that, and that's always an interesting number at the end to uh, to produce how many how many projects we closed in a in a folding at home scenario. Okay, so you've got like half a week to set it up. How much time did they give you to tear the whole thing down? Uh, about 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, it goes down really quickly. It's uh, it's remarkable. Yeah, it, it is something. If you've ever you know people, if you've been involved in, in these events, it takes such a long time to set things up but they usually are designed to break it down, get out of town. Yeah, the, <laughs> all, of the, the all the equipment is in racks, uh, you know, pre-racked, it arrives in the rack, and we just connect up the uh, patch panels between the racks, and when the time comes to go, we just power everything off and pull the cables and roll it back into the crate. Yeah, do, do you do similar things at other events? Uh, we don't do similar things at other events. Cisco Live is actually the only show I know of that actually runs the operations as a as a centerpiece of the of the show. It's really a, it's really a remarkable thing. Yeah, well, it, it is, uh, you, you you know, the network is obviously uh, pretty, pretty critical here. Yeah, the, the attendees expect a world-class experience, right? And so uh, our job is really to make sure that happens. All right. <coughs> Dave, w want to give you the final word, uh, you know, key takeaways you have uh, coming to events like this. Uh, well, it's really a, kind of an honor and a privilege, right? I mean, uh, NetApp is really proud to be a part of what Cisco has going on here. We've got a lot of synergies with our FlexPod program, and so it's uh, it's really great to be here and be a part of this show, and, and really specifically to work on the NOC team where I can say I had a, I had a hand in making it a success.
Well, Dave Arnett, really appreciate you joining, giving us some insight into some of the inner workings that help everything going on here at the show. Thanks very much. All right, we'll be back with lots more coverage here at Cisco Live Orlando 2018. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks so much for watching theCUBE.